Alright guys, welcome back to the Minecraft server with Church Mag, and I've got a weird helmet on my head because uh, we are in the new update. So I've got a turtle shell for a helmet, so we've got turtles here. This is the same Minecraft seed that we had for the opening um, episode announcing that we were resetting the server. It is a little different because they changed the algorithm. We've already got a bunch of stuff recorded. Um, if you're ever interested, you can go check out my channel. It's on the... It'll be in the end credits of this video, so you can always go check that out. But let me show you a little bit about what I've got already. Um, and then we're going to get into a topic on talking about calling. And I think it's important to talk about calling because it's something that's actually really important to Christians. So this is my basement. I'm not going to do like I did uh, the last server where I make my entire base underground. But this is going to be my mine shaft area. So each one of these little sections here. Um, you can go through and then we can start building out that way. So I will be doing that on my live streams or when we record the Church Mag podcast. Um, if you don't know, when we record the Church Mag podcast, I always play video games while I'm while we're talking. This area is going to be a little bit of a functional room, um, storage, uh, AFK fishing, a smeltery, and an enchantment room. So I have to take care of all that stuff. So this is down here. And we're going to today be building my house. So I want to build the house, um, at least the outside of it. We got a little bit of supplies. We'll probably have to take a minute to go get some more. In fact, I need to make some, oh no, we got some glass. What else do I need? I need dark wood and some oak leaves. So there's a whole lot of new features in this game, including dried kelp, which is flammable. And so I use that for all of my burning needs. Let me just make this real quick while we're chatting. We do have a ton of people on this server now. We actually have a couple of people. If you're interested, you can join the Church Mag server. All you have to do is ask. We don't just let you in just because you ask. Um, but we would love for you to um, check it out. So the description or the link for applying to the group is in the description. So check that out. All right. So let's look real quick. Um, so they're building a road. If we go over here, this is the town hall that we had automatically spawn in with the server um, just because we wanted to have a place to go. So they're building this. It looks like they're going to probably try to come this way just to connect all the different people. So if they were to go straight, then it would probably be about right here. So maybe the house would actually be... I don't want to make a huge house. This is just a spawn house, kind of like last server. I want it to be modern again. Yeah, let's do it right here. All right, so I'm going to use hedges. Beautiful. And then, let's see. What else do we got? Hmm. Maybe, I don't know what kind of doors I want to do. Maybe I need to do the dark oak doors. I swear I just heard something. Um, what kind of doors are these? I could try these out. Also would like to make, oh yeah, I got it. Beautiful. Um, so if I put wood down now, let's try this. I'm thinking I'm gonna have to eventually pick all this stuff up that's currently on the ground. I just wanna kinda get the front facing of it I might also have to do a little bit of terraforming. Do I have any dirt? I might have to go back down to get some dirt as well. So I'm thinking of doing like a, a nice front structure. Let's see. I don't want to go too high. I don't want to make it too small either. I think I'm going to have to just make all this flat here. So that would be the ground right there. And do I want to keep going with this? Maybe I do. 
I need to make some more concrete. This is gray concrete. Um, so I'll need to get some more ink sacks. Let's see. And then I want to do this. I want this to stick out a little bit. I think I want it to go a little bit further out than that. So we do this. And then I want to do glass. I think I want to do white glass, but I'm not 100% sold on this. So if this is the ground, I'm trying to think of how I will do this. Maybe the maybe this is set in a little bit. Let's see how this looks. Yeah, maybe I need to connect it here. Because what I was thinking, oops, I was thinking having a little bit of a, like, kind of glow inside. So really quick, let's get some stuff to put to kind of terraform, chat a little bit. So talking about calling, that was the subject I had initially brought up. Um, I think calling is this very interesting um, conversation about, oh, I have dirt actually already, um, about... What is it that we have for our lives? I think the American dream, and again, I'm speaking to Americans. I know more people watch this than just Americans, but the American process, especially when I was like 13 and 16 year olds living in the Midwest Ohio area was, you need to work hard. You need to work um, to support your family. Even if you are a teenager, you need to gain a work ethic. And when you're in college, you need to be thinking about the family you're gonna have. If you're gonna have a family, how to work really hard how to, to get ahead in life and do what you need to do to take care of those that you love. Um, and if you're like me, and I don't presume everybody is, but if you're like me, I think thinking about what you're going to do for the rest of your life is really tough. So in my um, younger years, I thought I would be an architect. And... Then I got a little bit older and said, you know what, I'm not great at drawing and that's actually where most people make money in architecture. You can do it on the computer, but you don't make as much money. And so I said, you know what, let's instead do, let's, yeah, I like this. I'm probably gonna take all this out um, because I wanna have floors, but for now I'm just gonna kind of level it out. Um, but architecture just did not seem to kind of hold my ideas of what I want to do for the rest of my life. Um, so I changed to computer engineering. And computer engineering is what I went for my undergrad. Uh, did all four years and by the time I was done, um, life had happened and I decided, you know what, I'm not gonna do computer engineering anymore. But at that point in time, I had really started to try to understand my faith and understand what God wanted for me. Um, and I think when people try to think about what they're going to do with their life for um, a lot of people in the American culture with women, they look at uh, wanting to start a family and just the general idea of what that looks like. And my suggestion would be to you, if that's what you think you would like to do, maybe talk to God about it. Like, is that where you want to go for yourself? Um, is that what he would like? Because we have these grand ideas for motherhood or fatherhood or working really profitable jobs and we know what we like, at least in that moment. But I think that we also have to realize that there's this um, factor of what God wants for us. And just because um, we currently don't like something, I don't think is a good enough reason to not do it. Um, right now I'm a counselor. I used to be in youth ministry. And in high school, I was one of those people who was very, very, very shy. I'm still not like over outwardly like, I wanna talk to people all the time kind of a thing. But I think because of what God did in my heart, oh, I really like that. Yeah, I definitely want to get some more, some more of that. Um, I'm going to have to see if I have some black ink. Nope. What do we do right here? Okay. Do we have any bone meal? <gasps> we don't. 
go home for skeletons. Um, I think that just the general expectation that we know the right answer for ourselves is actually maybe not the Christian thing to do. Maybe the better solution is to ask God what he wants for us. Because, like I said, I wasn't necessarily a people person. Now, I love to talk to people. God's put it on my heart to help those that are struggling in life. And um, sitting down and doing counseling, oh my goodness, my uh, turtle pen is overflowing. Um, helping those that want, that need some help in their life is really, really important to me. And I don't think I'll ever not do that. But as a young lad, um, I don't think I would have ever volunteered for that. And so when I was in college, I had this epiphany. I don't know if it was a crisis or what it was, but I just was sitting in my dorm room and saying, God, what do you want me to do? What do you want for my life? And it was one of those where it was like legitimately if God showed up in a burning bush and said, you're going to be a trash person, like a trash man for the rest of your life, I'd been like, I'm going to do the best service for collecting trash that you will ever see ever. And that's kind of what my thought was at that point was whatever God kind of led me to do is what I would do. And I'm going to need a whole lot of this stuff because I'm going to make this entire top like this. That's okay. Um, and so when he told me to go into youth ministry and then later to do counseling, um, it wasn't like this God is talking to me calling, but it was this prayer that um, the impression came on my heart and it was legitimate. It was no reservations. Whatever it was that God wanted me to do, I was going to do. I don't think the process was easy by any means. In fact, I think it was really hard to get through, to get done. It was challenging, um, but maybe that was kind of the point of it. So I would encourage you guys, if you're a high school student, um, it's not too late to ask that question of what do you want from me, God? What do you want me to do in life? Um, if you are a parent of five kids, uh, single parents of five kids, still not too late to ask God what he wants for you. I don't know how I'm going to do this. I'm going to have to think about this. Um, but I think that that's something that's really, really important for people to consider, to be asking God, I want that to grow grass, um, in their life. What is it that you could seek out from him? I really like this. I wish I had some bone meal. Um, give me a couple of minutes. I'm going to go get some bone meal from some skeletons. Um, go get some more concrete mix and then we'll finish up our conversation on calling we'll be right back all right guys so we've got our sand and we've got our gravel and I made some clay or some gray concrete so we've got some white concrete oh I do not have my there we go grabbed a whole bunch of bone meal the number of skeletons I had to kill for this is crazy. All right, so we've got all that. Now, we will have to go over here and put it in the water because this is just the dust. So we'll have to take care of that in a little bit. But let me get the frame of this. I'm not going to put the roof on it just yet. In fact, I might just do that off camera. But I want to go ahead and get at least the first floor done. I think the second floor, how wide should I make this? I guess all the way to here, because I need to make sure I incorporate this into the build. Beautiful. And then I do want stairs. So you come into the house. I want this all to be downstairs, and then maybe over here we'll do, let's see, where is the, where does this go to? Not 100% sure. Just practice, see what it looks like. So I wanted to finish the conversation about the
the calling. So I have a couple of Bible verses that I think is really important to keep in mind when we talk about calling. Um, the first Bible verse, a couple, a ver- Bible verse and a quote. So the first one is the quote. So the quote is um, from Andy Stanley or Arthur Stanley, which is, I believe, his father. And he goes, the true calling of a Christian is not to be extraordinary, to do extraordinary things, but to do ordinary things in extraordinary ways, which would indicate that you do not have to be a pastor. You do not have to be um, the next Billy Graham. Billy Graham brought tons of influence. Uh, The Apostle Paul brought tons of influence to the world. Um, but it's through the ordinary day-to-day stuff, day-to-day life, that we really make change. And so whether you're a salesman, a dentist, or a factory worker, you have the ability to influence those around you. And I think it's important to realize it's in those times and in those places that you have a calling to fulfill. Um, I think that God truly puts that on our hearts to do that and we need to seek after him Um, sometimes that calling does include going into ministry but sometimes it just simply means being a a college student and working with an organization like campus crusade for christ where you are um, sharing the gospel with people on your campus and so for me all this is an important um, understanding of what it means to have faith so I want to put this in. I don't think I want to do this. I think I want to use half slabs because it'll make it look, feel a little bit taller. And we can stretch our resources just a little bit more. Excellent. I need more than that. Let's see if this will work. So I'm thinking stairs here that'll go up to that floor. So let me do here, across, excellent. Beautiful. Um, I'll probably not finish this this episode. So next episode we do a Minecraft theology. I will show you the final details. I'll have all the design features in place. Um, just because I want to make sure I'm focusing on the content of what we're talking about, not necessarily the building or the mining or whatever we do in these episodes. Um, so calling, I think there's a, I did a devotional in the book of Nehemiah and the very first, um, chapter is on the book of calling. And I went through the book of Nehemiah, not as trying to find topics, but literally went chapter to chapter through the book of Nehemiah. This book is so important to me that I actually named my kid Nehemiah. Not for the sake of um, doing any... I I did it because it was just... It literally is this um, commitment to God to keep the promise that we have. And I feel like that is such an honorable and important thing to have and to really hold for yourself. Let's make some stairs. And so the first chapter of Nehemiah says this in the verses three and four it says they said unto me those who survived the exile and are back in the province are in great trouble and disgrace the wall of jerusalem is broken down and its gates have been burned with fire when i heard these things i sat down and wept for some days i mourned and fast and prayed for the god to the god of heaven and it was in this time whenever he the the entire book of nehemiah is nehemiah was the servant of the king um, that ruled over where Jerusalem eventually, um, where Jerusalem was. And he was literally the cupbearer. It was the most trusted person of the kingdom. So much so that the king trusted him if, uh, the, if Nehemiah had said that this is something worth drinking, the king would trust him and he would drink it. Um, and so if anybody was to be able to kill the king, it was him. And so the king trusted him that much. And so when Nehemiah heard about Jerusalem, he was so distraught, he went to the king and asked the king for assistance. He asked the king for help. Nope, that's not going to work. 
And so at this time, that was when Nehemiah gained his calling. That's when um, he set out to restore Jerusalem, to be able to make the nation great, to be able to, well, that doesn't work, um, to be able to restore the honor of God in light of men and um, returned the entire province of God uh, to where it needed to be. And so this is when Nehemiah gains his calling. It's when we see Nehemiah stepping out in faith and the king giving him this because God rewarded that. And it's such a beautiful thing to see. I'm actually going to take this out. But I don't want it to wrap all the way around. Maybe I'll do to here. I don't know how this is going to look. Um, I don't want the whole thing to be glass, though. So, for me, doing something like Minecraft is not necessarily like God is looking at me playing Minecraft and saying, Oh my goodness, Jeremy, look how whole he is because he's playing Minecraft. But I do think that because I'm using this platform specifically to talk about God, I think that's when God honors all of this. Um, if you don't know, we actually got featured in USA Today. Uh, they did a they did a article talking about how um, people are using Minecraft to talk about Jesus, and they cited our our entire server, and it was really cool just to see something that I have I'm doing. I'm not doing this series because of creating YouTube. I'm actually doing this series solely for wanting my son to be able to watch Minecraft videos and feel comfortable with him because there's a lot of people out there that swear in their Minecraft videos and I don't want him to watch that. I don't want him to be a part of that. So I think maybe I'm going to make this all white over here. And But then just to be able to see God take something like this and to maybe use it for something more I absolutely love. Um, I hope that it does get to see other people, and if it doesn't, that's all right by me. Um, but go out and do this. Go out and try to um, serve and in all things that you have, whether you're the paper boy or the next Billy Graham. Do it because it's your calling. Um, if you're young enough that you are not employed, that might be the perfect time to start asking God to reveal what is it that God wants you to be doing in life? And ask him to make it something that you want to do to be able to kind of have that excitement for um, whatever your project or business or whatever it is that you're going to be doing will be. Um, I think that it's going to be really important to set yourself up and to ask God to help with that. So I'd encourage you guys just to consider that. Um, I'm going to end it with that. Thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. Um, if you have questions, if you have comments, don't hesitate to leave a comment. Um, let's take a look real quick at this, see what it looks like. That's coming in all nicely. If we just build that up, and then we need to build this basement floor in here, I think that's gonna be perfect. I like it. So, I'm gonna leave it at that. Thank you so much guys for watching. Tell me what do you think your calling is or maybe what are, what's the way you wanna kind of approach that um, as far as asking God, what should you do with your life? And to do it so that you can help share the gospel and let people know about who Jesus is. Anyways, I'll catch you guys next time. See ya, bye.